What's up, no load time? Joel here doing a spoilers review for the latest film from, from the DCU, which is Blue Beetle. If you have not seen Blue Beetle, I would recommend that you hold off on this video, subscribe to the channel, come back, watch it after you've seen the film, because we will talk about spoilers briefly and just overall reactions. You've been warned, let's get into it. Alrighty, so this film seems to be the kind of movie, and, and I don't know this as a fact, but just it seems to be the kind of movie that will fit into the future of the DCU uh, with James Gunn and Peter Safran coming in. I know that technically Superman Legacy is the first film in the chapter uh, of DC's Gods and Monsters, as they refer to it as. That's also kick off that brand new live action cinematic universe, but at the same extent, um, if you have been following James Gunn on social media, you'll see on Instagram, he made a comment that uh, this character will be a part of the future of the DCU. So it's fascinating nonetheless, and it definitely caught my attention considering that we're trying to still figure out what this future fully is going to be. That being alone, watching this movie, I thought it was a nice addition to the future of DC. I think that most movie going audiences will appreciate this film, will enjoy this film. It's very much one of those um popcorn flick family flick kind of film that people will watch and each person will have something that they'll for the most part enjoy um i think that you know this is a character that because he's some might say c c or d tier basically someone that's not a big a-list name he's not superman he's not batman he's not flash where people know this character you know blue beetle is a very new character and so to have this film be an introduction introduction for this character is a pretty huge deal um and so you know i think that they, they took an opportunity to really try to to educate people with an origin story but at the same extent um try to to let everyone know this is not the first iteration of blue beetle this is just the modern day blue beetle and um so yeah you you, you do get the, the the character ted cord mentioned um, you know, who is the second iteration of Blue Beetle, Blue Dan, I want to say Dan Garrett, I want to say is the first iteration of Blue Beetle in the comics. So um, there is a, an original Blue Beetle that is in this universe that had existed before. Kind of remind me a little bit of like if you're a Marvel person and you've seen, um, you know, Ant-Man, you know that like Hank Penn was the first Ant-Man and Scott Lang is the second. Um, you know, so, so I think that's kind of how I took it, you know, modern day iteration of the character. But yeah, the, 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 the former Blue Beetle, when you get to the post credit scene, you realize this character's still out there. So it's fascinating to see, you know, there's technically two Blue Beetles, maybe the mentor and the mentee. I think that's kind of the route they'll go. Will this continue on? It's going to be fascinating to see. Like I said, it's technically, um, not was, was not on the, the chapter one slate that James Gunn put out on, uh, you know, on video before, but yet. The comments being made on social media makes you think that there's a very strong possibility this character will continue on. And when I say not just the character, but specifically this actor, uh, Yo-Yo, playing this character. So I think, I think again, most people will like it. Now, let's talk about my just general re reaction to it. Um, I think the film is okay. Uh, I don't think it's 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 that good, to be honest. Um, it it kind of reminded me of Shazam 2, um, which if you guys have seen that video, make sure you check out that review from us. But... You know, I think Shazam 2 was one of those movies that suffered with just being sometimes too corny. And this movie has moments like that where, you know, I love comedy. And that's something that I actually think helps the film in general. Is it's just that it doesn't take itself that serious. I mean, it's it's a kid that gets a, you know, a, a literal bug, you know, technology that somehow gives him powers. It's, it's, it's out there. It's a crazy, you know, concept. But so I do think like trying to have that humor is good. I just think that there's some moments that just sort of get a little corny. Like, you know, we're talking spoilers here, you know, like the, you know, start having like the machine starts doing uh, like farts, you know, to take out the enemies, you know, and I'm like, I don't know, man, this, this is the kind of stuff right there that I was like, it's, it's, it's trying to do a lot. Um, but yet like having like George Lopez in it, hilarious. Oh my gosh. Having him really drive that comedy as the crazy conspiracy theorist uncle loves it. I thought that was great. You know, like the Nana, you know, being like, She's somebody who has a passive, you know, uh, staging revolutions, you know, like I thought that was hilarious, right? But I just, I just think overall, like it, it it's fun uh, and it's, it's good for you and your, your general movie gods. And that's not me trying to, you know, speak down to people who like this movie at all. I just think that at its core, it's, 
it, it could have made it some more, you know, polishing for sure to, to have that good balance between uh, drama and comedy. Um, and, and I'm not saying that the comedy was, was what messed it up. I think the comedy helped it, but I think some of the things that was intended to be comedy ended up being corny, but that's just on me. Um, overall though, I still enjoyed the film for what it was. I think, again, most people will like it. I definitely would encourage people to stick around for those post credits to see those moments if they haven't, if you saw the movie and you didn't stick around for it, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. At the very, very last one, that's just, you know, uh, just a fun DC um, you know, little, little, uh, call back to the, the animation you see earlier in the film. Um, definitely playing moments that reminded me of like Spider-Man, uh, you know, and I'm trying to make this a DC Marvel thing, but just, you know, for, for general sakes here, I think there's a lot of moments that reminded me of like Spider-Man where you see like, you know, in, in Far From Home or Homecoming where he's still kind of coming into himself as a, as a young hero. Um, so like the whole sequence where the, the, the scarf actually goes on to his face and takes over his body. And the first time he's taken off in the suit from the house, you know, if a lot of this stuff felt like how like, you know, uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man, how he was really discovering, you know, himself and his abilities, uh, his powers. This is just more one of those movies that they just didn't waste any time. They just jump right into it. He's, he's got this thing and now he's got to learn about it. And there's no, there's no hiding it. Yeah, something I did appreciate too, like there's no hiding his abilities or he's not trying to like sneak around his family and be like, I've got a secret identity. Like you see who he is now, you know, what, what that means to the rest of the world and the media. At this moment, it seems like the general public doesn't know who he is. I don't know if that's going to stick. We'll see. Um, you know, I would like that to be the case where just his family knows it. You know, um, Jenny knows it, but maybe not, you know, the, the general public. But, you know, I just think in general, like the fact that he's not hiding it from his family as a circle of trust was great. I also think that like just in general, the family was a really great concept. Um, like I've talked about this before with other films where it just the, the casual cliche of like if you are a teenager, you somehow or, or a young adult even, which in this film, they didn't make him play a teenager, made him actually play his age, which is great. Um, you know, like somehow you're supposed to be resenting your family. And I understand that everyone has a great family or great relationships. I'm not saying that, but it just felt like the stories all started to have the same, um, you know, cliches of, of these, how these characters were with their families. And in this one, he actually has a great relationship, you know, with his family where they have his back. They want to see his best interests. You know, his, his father makes time to speak to him and, and try to you know encourage him. And, and he really cares about his family. He doesn't want them to lose the home and he loves them like seeing somebody who, you know, genuinely cares about their family, it's great to see that portrayed in Hollywood. Again, I understand it's not everyone's story, but it just felt like the, that's the rarity to see a positive family interaction. I think that's not me getting off on a whole other tangent, but I think it's important to show that. But uh, yeah, the, like, the grandma was like hilarious, like I was mentioned before, the uncle, hilarious. You know, the father's t passing was um, kind of, I felt like for foreshadowed a little bit when they mentioned that he, he had a, you know, a heart condition, you know, uh, and, and that, you know, the, the main actor, he was not there, you know, that the Blue Beetle was not there for that originally. So I think that that was already kind of foreshadowed early on. I, I could see that that could be an issue, but still like emotional and, and used in a very emotional way. Um, overall, I think the film is, is a good time. I think people will enjoy it, um, like I said, but uh, yeah, just curious to see how it fits in the future of the DCU. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you would make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. And also if you have a comment about how you felt about the movie, maybe you liked it, maybe you didn't like it, write those comments down in the, the comment section down below. We'd love to hear your reaction to it. Uh, let's just keep it all civil, of course. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.